Hello, everyone. Samuel. Hello. Hey, Yi, how are you? Hey. I'm fine, thank you. I see we have somebody new I have not met before. Uh, yeah. Hello. Hi. Josh here. I'm, I'm uh, just joined the Cloud Advocacy team. Hi, Josh. Josh, nice to meet you. Josh, you said what team are you from? Sorry, Josh, I didn't get that. I just joined the Cloud Advocacy team at Microsoft for oh, Cloud Native. Okay. Oh, well, welcome. I've been working on Notary with David for a little bit, so I thought I'd join. Oh, that's great, Josh. Okay. Won't be long. I'm at an event with my, uh, for a family event, but I want to jump on for a couple minutes while I could. Oh, that's great. Yeah, good to have a yeah. nice place. I don't remember if I jumped on any calls prior to today, but uh, good meeting you. Welcome. Likewise. I should wait, Patrick, Pritesh. Yeah, Hello, thank good morning. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, good afternoon hi. and good morning. Yeah. And Patrick, I don't remember if I've met you before uh, either. I just joined uh, Microsoft Oh, wow. uh, this year. Yeah, I'm hey, working well. on the notary project. Awesome. Well, welcome, Patrick. Nice to meet you. So two new faces today. That's great. Yes. Uh, two new names. That's great. Uh, so uh, let's see. From an agenda perspective, there's a very big critical agenda. Vani uh, did most of the work, but she couldn't join today. She may join a bit late. So I think uh, Pritish and I are prepared to represent Vani today on things she wanted to discuss. And I noticed the agenda. I think you put out Z or Fiamen, you put out the agenda. It's 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 similar to what we wanted to talk about. We just went in a lot more detail to things we wanted to talk about, but I think we are aligned on the next steps. So we can jump right in and pick up the action items from the agenda. That's one thing we can do. Or if there's something pressing that you need to discuss from an engineering perspective, we can do that because the majority of my items that Vani and I worked on are project related. So we could wait. Yeah. Uh I think maybe firstly we, we can uh, focus on the technical related issues yep. for the PR review, uh, for the COSE PR review, and also maybe some PR related to Alpha 4. We can focus on that firstly. Yep. Then we can uh, reach to the project related. Yep. I will let you drive. I think you have the first agenda about the COSE PR review. So I'll let you drive that first and then. I think the remaining items are self-explanatory. We can talk about it once we come to it. So yeah, go for it. Yeah, for the for the COSA PR, we have two PR, I think, uh, uh, created uh, one week ago. Uh, so I'm not sure the current status from Pritesh or Minion. Uh, so any will, comments or suggestions? So I did add some comments on PR number 676, which is refactor JWS for signature package, which is the second PR. Uh, 76 uh, is, uh, yeah, second refactoring. Yeah, and uh, yeah. there's one more PR you mentioned, right? Is this the add course implementation? Uh, okay. We have a 75. Five. Okay, I will take a look by end of the for 75 also. Like I, like I reviewed 76 today, and I will just review 75 by end of the, basically after note, this meeting. Yeah, seventy-five okay. is for uh, Cozy branch, and uh, and uh, 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 sorry, seventy-five is for the Cozy implementation. Seventy-six is for JWS refactoring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's better that we can firstly finish the uh, JWS refactoring, so that uh, we can uh, uh, replace and merge all the JWS related reflecting work to the main branch because it's separate from the code implementation. Then you can start uh, focusing on the 75 for the code implementation. Yeah, on, on 76, I had a couple of questions there. The, uh, let me share the screen. Uh, okay, let's. Okay. 
So I had two, three cautions to share screen. I am not able to share the screen. That's strange. I think senior. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I had one question regarding. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I had one question. Why we are so I can see there are two different interfaces. We have defined one for remote signing and one for local signing. My question was, why do we need two separate? Isn't the remote a special case? Isn't local the special case of remote signing? Uh, that's different. Um, so basically, uh, for the remote signing, uh, we don't have access to the private key, but for local signing, uh, we have access to the private key. That's the major yes, that's, difference. That's true, but it's a special case. For example, anyway, we have we have eyes like we have abstracted out the sign method, which needs to which needs access to private key, not actually this methods, right? Uh, because the uh, the underlying library needs that private key for local signing. Oh, yeah, I understand that. So basically, otherwise, we have... yeah. Otherwise, we need to implement our own something like ISA sign or each CDSSI. So we we don't want to implement them uh, by ourselves. We just want to leverage a library to do everything for us. Uh, ye... okay. So because JWT library doesn't support that, that's the reason. It needs. Uh... Yes, so so basically, uh, the the JWT uh, uh, library uh, can use its own uh, signing method, or you implement your signing okay. method. So uh, for remote signing, we don't have a choice because the private key is not in our hands. So uh, we have to uh, uh, implement our remote signing method and to do everything by ourselves. However, for the local signing, we have access to the private key. We can pass the private key to the library and let the library do everything for us. Fine enough. Can we? So, like, the thing is, like, let's say, for example, if I if I introduce a remote signing using JWT library, I can still use the remote signing plugin, right? So, I was thinking more more in that sense that we can use remote signing plugin with a special case for local private key. Like, for example, if I have a plugin which takes a private key but uses a plugin method of not notation, it will still work. So can we just do that in our code base? It might simplify the workflow. I might be wrong, like, but that was I was thinking in that sense. That we can just have a, so for example, right now we are defining two methods. Okay, I think yeah, I will take I will take a pass again on this and see. Yeah, I think yeah. I got the point. Yeah, can you just review the code again uh, so we can understand it properly? Yeah, I will take a one more pass at this. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only question. That was the only major question I had. Ah, uh, Pitesh, uh, when do you think you can finish the review because it already. Uh, so I can I can finish JWT okay, yeah. by end of day. At least I have posted a couple of questions. So like, uh, I think who is the owner of the PR? Yeah, I think uh, the, there are a couple of other questions. So once I can reply on this, I can review it by tomorrow. I can review it tomorrow morning. Does it sound sustainable? Or like, if we can, if someone can update the uh, reply to my questions there, then I can do it in like till seven p.m. Like in two hours. So yeah, it depends upon how soon good. I get the answers to the question. Okay, uh, I, I think from Shui's team, and uh, the team member can uh, comment, provide the feedback as soon as he can. But you you can decide if it is too late for you today. You, I think you can do it tomorrow. Yeah, I can for sure. I can do it tomorrow morning. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. Uh, any other 
thing related to the cozy PR review, Shui Patrick. I didn't have any comments. Uh, I haven't been able to make a pass. I think once Pratesh finishes, I'll, I think tomorrow again, I'll be able to spend some time on the JWS PR and the cozy one will come after that. Okay. And we have a proposal that uh, once we have the refactoring uh, PR review and merge, uh, we we can uh, sorry we can uh, merge the stage coast branch, rebase it and merge to the main branch for the JWS uh, refactoring part. Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, I mean, once that the PR. 76 is reviewed. We will rebase and merge the state coast branch to main branch because currently all the work is related to JWS refactoring. So it's separated from the COSI implementation. So we want to merge the JWS refactoring part firstly into the main branch. Okay, and then the, the COSI implementation will be a direct PR on main branch? Yeah. Okay. So the implementation will come later uh, directly that, on the main branch. That sounds good. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, Samuel, I think that's uh, uh, that's for the COSA PR review part. Great. So if there are no more technical queries, then we can jump into the project management part of it. Um, I know we don't have all the representatives, but I think some of the uh, project management tasks require reviews, so we can cover them one by one as we go through it. Um, let's see, I don't mind sharing my screen. I can share my screen and then we can walk down it. Hang on. Uh, let me know if you can see uh, my screen where I'm showing the um, agenda items. Yes, yeah. I can see. Yeah, okay. I can see. It. Great. Yeah. So I think this is uh, Vani did most of the work. So kudos to her. She had a conflict. She couldn't attend. We also need, as we discuss this, figure out how we can communicate the status uh, through the um, issues itself so that we can get a concise view. But anyhow, for the alpha four, uh, we think we agree based on the items we had identified. The spec changes that British made has been approved by David. Uh, the implementation work that British has, he has started work on it. I think it is out there for review. The PR is out there for review. Though there's a pull request on the implementation part. Once that is available, I think we, are on track to cut an alpha release uh, either this Thursday or next Monday by latest. Uh, this will be the alpha four in which the uh, the concerns we found in alpha three will be addressed and we should be able to use it forward. So the so based on that, I think uh, we think this status is green based on the scope and the date that we decided last week. And I think we can call this part of it green. For the RC1 uh, items that we have, uh, as we all have decided to focus on user stories to look at the big pictures. So here are all the user stories. Uh, this afternoon, uh, uh, because there was a discussion about adding this back into RC1. So Vani and I added this user story for the trust store CLI commands into RC1, because I believe that discussion happened last week. So we added it back into the user stories. Our next set of questions and uh, an update is on all of these user stories. So as we go through these user stories, I'm a quick recap as to where we are. Um, I want to know what's the best way to represent the latest status on these user stories as to who is this assigned to, what is the next item? It's really hard to communicate that. Uh, so let's see if we can come up with a mechanism as to how to communicate the next steps on these user stories. That's one request I have. We have some ideas, but let me just share uh, the work that she did. Uh, so on the first user story, the one about the CLI commands, I believe Yi, you have put together a list of CLI commands that you want us to review and give feedback on. 
I started looking at it, uh, but it's not complete. And I think uh, Milind and Pritish will, are also going to look at that. So the status on the first user story is Pritish and Milind have looked at it, but we will give you more feedback on it as to what CLA commands to use for the trust store. And um, I guess the next step on this is once you have the feedback, you, you will work with somebody to get this implemented. Is that an adequate representation on this? Sorry, I want to interject that the, the review is not limited to Pritesh and me. Uh, it's, and I think should be, or CLI commands, uh, I'll, I'll work with Vani and edit some of this. Okay. The, for the CLI commands, the feedback needs to come from pretty much everybody, uh, including product managers okay. uh, from both the sides. Uh, it relates directly to user experience. Let me fix that. I think it's a good call out. Let me fix that so that we all know that we all have to do this versus just one of us. Yeah, that's a good call out. Let me fix this. Okay. Uh, yeah. I will fix that. Uh, the next one. Uh, so um, I'm sorry. Uh, for the implementation, uh, I will be responsible for the trust store implementation commands. Oh, Patrick, will that be you? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, great. Yes. Uh, we already have a initial version on the dev rc1 branch yeah okay thanks so let's let all of us look at look at this roy you milan i will look at it as well anybody else feel free to jump on this one and just give feedback on that one uh, that's great good call out by you milan like um, let's see. Let's look at the next one. The next user story was was regarding the sign command. I believe um, I I think it goes back to the you, you had started producing a list of uh, options for the CLI commands. I'm not sure what is the next good step we can take here on the list of CLI commands. Yeah. For the for, sign, for the sign, sign yeah. experience, I add a comment. And I need uh, uh, I need a suggestion from maybe everyone for the sign experience. So uh, so if everyone agree with that or uh, any other comments, I can uh, start a PR to address that. But firstly, uh, okay. some issue needs to be uh, discussed. Uh, scroll down. Oh, this yeah. is yeah. I list uh, several items. And it also related to some some parameters we we may need to consider to remove it uh, for RC one. Actually, let's let's discuss this right now. Uh, and again, the feedback isn't limited to just me, Steve, David, uh, folks. That that's my suggestion. That I think that that way we can make better use of this time. Uh, in in terms of the the agenda items, the most of these we have discussed previously uh, once with David uh, when others were not on the call and then in the Monday call with Shiwe and team based in China. Uh, I, I don't mind using some time going through this and yep. then some time going through the uh, trust store write up so we can we can give some feedback right away. It's a, that's a good idea because we are using project management time in this meeting. We can use it to spend on that feedback. That's a great call. So this one is open. Let's finish this. Then we can go back to the uh, CLI commands for trust tool and all of us can use this time to review it. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm looking at it. Let me collect my thoughts and give you feedback. We are reading what's on the screen right now to give feedback.
Yeah, let's raise hand if you have any questions or comments to give. Um, because I'm presenting my screen, I can't give a comment or question. I think Milan has raised his hand. So let Milan give any feedback. And Milan, feel free to add your feedback into this issue as well. I'll put it in chat, but you have the floor now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are good questions. So the expiry duration and timestamp, uh, you're right, timestamping can be removed. The minus E expiry duration is related to the expiry we put in the signature. So it is unrelated to TSA. So you would retain the minus E and you can remove the minus T. I'll, and then after successful sign, uh, I think Shiva can comment on this, the removing the notation cache. So after signing, it is also stored in the local cache. The scenario to store it would be if you're just, um, it depends on the integrations as well. If you sign it and then verify it right away, so run the sign command and then the verify command, it'll pull it from the cache. Uh, I don't know if there are any other use cases. It's again, it, it's for optimization. Shiva, do you have any comment on the second point? Uh, yes. So you mentioned that we can remove the or uh, uh, notation pull and the notation push, right? Uh, actually, it has the same uh, feeling of it. Uh, so uh, you can comment on that. Uh, you mean this uh, pull or push, or or, or you mean the second the bullet, the cache? Uh, uh, the cache. So basically, we are removing the uh, the entire cache. So because we don't have the notation cache, so that means the notation pull and push are no longer functional. Uh, so can we also remove the notation pull and push? Uh, for, for the pull and the push, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether uh, we already discussed this uh, uh, last week. Uh, uh, meaning, are, are you there in the, uh, I mean, Wednesday meeting? We, we have a CLI status that markdown file. There are some suggestions to remove some commands. I think the pull and the push are also included. I'm not sure whether we already discussed it. Um, we can go through it again. I, I think I, I, I don't remember the notation cache changes to, I, are we fine with removing notation cache? Shiva, uh, are there any scenarios that it affects negatively? Uh, no, currently no. Uh, at least from the scope of RC1, uh, no. So what is the kind of, well, what is the story for cache? Uh, is it required after, like, is it a GA feature? Uh, no, I don't think so. The cache was there uh, for prototyping. Uh, it seems that uh, we don't need cache anymore because we always, uh, uh, we always uh, for signing, we always push the signature to a remote. Uh, for verifying, we always uh, pull from the um, from the remote. Um, cache was there just for uh, performance optimization. Uh, we can add it back later if we really want the performance. Okay, that sounds good. Mm. All right, and then the pull and push is for pushing a specific signature by itself. And I, I don't know what pull is for. Pull allows you to uh, pull a specific reference. Shiva, can you tell me what notation pull is used for? Okay, so uh, based on we have a notation cache, right? So uh, notation pull and push is for pulling and the push uh, uh, cached signatures. So basically, notation push is to push everything. Uh, I mean, uh, all the cache signature related to this manifest to remote, and the for pull is to pull 
uh, every uh, signature of the um, uh, of the targeted manifest to the local. But currently, we have a uh, signature filtering mechanism. So I don't think uh, the notation push and pull are useful for now. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Then, so second and third, we are good with, yeah, for, for removing notation cache and push and pull. If we have specific scenarios that we want to support post RC1 or based on feedback, we can we can introduce them later. Yeah, I think the the idea is that we don't ex expose too too much uh, for yeah, RC1. I, Otherwise, we cannot modify it, right? Yeah, so, I don't. So, yeah. Okay, that's good feedback. But I have one more request. Uh, so we decided what to remove. Will it be easier to share what is remaining as part of the notation sign command? What options remain? I think that's the feedback uh, that he wanted so that he can he could work on the CLI spec. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I will later uh, create a PR so that uh, uh, for everyone to review it. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, thing which, which we skipped, as uh, Smilin pointed out. Let's re let's use this, re use the time in this meeting to read this. I'm putting it in chat, the link that he has put together for us to review and give feedback in this meeting. Let's go into that. Milan, your hand is raised. Do you have feedback or what was the previous hand raised? No, no. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's read this then. I'll leave my screen open, I'll read through as well. Yeah, uh, actually, the user case uh, covers three, three, three scenarios: add certificates, list the certificates, and the delete certificates. And we we don't think a user need to or user can uh, update certificates. And for add certificates, uh. uh there was an internal discussion, but I didn't update this page yet. We are thinking about that if a user uh, don't specify the type uh, of the trust store, for example, say or TSA, uh, or user don't specify the trust store name, it is still okay. Basically means that we can by default use uh, the type of CA and also the store name we could use default. So that for uh, simplification, user can just uh, use notation third add with certificate file. Then the files will be uh, added into the uh, type of say uh, the type of store CA and the store name will be default. Yeah, that means the type and the store for the add command could be. Yeah, I, I did have a question on what is the return code of, of the command? Like normally zero is success. What do we return on failure? We return discriminated value of, of non zero. Do we need to list those? Uh, I think that's a good question. I think for success, uh, we should return zero, but for failure, we could consider for different uh, arrows. Could you yeah, open that as an issue or, here. or address that here or document what we actually return? Definitely you should not return zero. No. Uh, so we may need a list of uh, error codes, right? And also uh, expand the ar arrows. Uh, error description. Yeah, the error description goes to standard error and the return value of the process. Command has to return something non zero. Yeah. Are folks able to comment on the, this particular document? Uh, 
there is is and it's tricky. Basically, you have to go to edit and then you have to go back to normal view. Then I can comment. Uh, but we we have used previous hack MD previously, right? Just yeah, yeah. I don't know why it's with this has, this is happening, but yes, that that worked for me. You're saying adding comments only in the edit view. Okay. No, you, once you go to edit and once now you go to other view, you can add the comment. You have to go to edit view to add, like. Uh -huh. I don't know, like to get that permission, I, it's weird, but yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So the other comment I have here is if I try to add a cert and I give you the wrong path, you're not going to know the type. So do you get a different error message? Same thing on uh, delete. Called, yeah. So could you flesh some of those out? And then the question here is if I try to add a cert that already exists, do we report it as being added or do we fail the app? It's unclear from here. Mm. Yeah, currently the on success and on fit is, uh, is general. So uh, we could consider different uh, uh, scenarios and add more error messages and uh, also considering the error code. So currently, any video will will always show the similar message. No specific reason. Milan, I have a question for you. Like, uh, so how often will these commands be run? Like, they will be run typically when we are adding a root, or this will be help me understand when all. How often will these commands be used? Can you give throw some light on it? Yeah, so, so this is related to setting up trust, trust store, right? Which you want to set up the trust store even, in, even before you can start verifying artifacts. You can, you can sign artifacts without setting these up, but for verifying, you need to do this. Normally this is, uh, or typically this is a one-time setup. You would, you would have determined the set of trusted routes outside of this process and you would have a bundle and then you would just run these commands place these uh, so from usage perspective it is like more one time and then occasionally updating it or modifying it and then list could be used for like diagnostics or something where you're like this doesn't doesn't verify though i i want to check what certificates i have in store etc Got it. So where I was going with this is I started adding some comments and I realized we don't want this to be a certificate manager where it reports, hey, this certificate is expiring or or nothing of that. It's just a simple way to add and it's called very, very rarely these yeah. commands. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I think you got your feedback on this one. I only added one feedback that the show command has to be up leveled here. And one thingy that I was thinking was if I am trying to look, if I have allowed, say, Rabbit Wobbit Networks as a trusted publisher, then how quickly can I verify that Wobbit Networks public code signing certificate is added here? So that was a use case I had in mind. So if you can help me understand what steps will I follow to figure out if Wobbit Networks certificate is added here? Uh, you, you mean the the end to end flow or? No, no, no. If so, I am trying to debug, and I am I have pulled an image from Wobbit Networks, our our typical publisher, which we mentioned in Notary V two documentation, right? Um, so, and I'm trying to, and I'm pulling an image from a known publisher, but it is failing signature verification. So I go back to my trust store to see, hey, which all publishers have I, who, which all publishers certificates am I allowing to you to be used, or what's my trust store look like? That's the use case which came to my mind. Uh, I'm sure these, these commands will help me meet those use cases. I just wanted to think in terms of use cases. But but for the certificate, uh, need to be added by, by the user. Correct. So uh, imagine the user has added the certificate, but they're still seeing a failure. So they want to quickly go and check if Wobbit Network certificate is actually present or not. So which of these CLI commands they can use to debug that is my question. Uh, I think it is the list certificate uh, notation list, and also uh, we have the certificate show details. But when they do the list, they will only see a list of the absolute path of the certificate with the names. And then they'll have to individually go through each one of those certificates one by one to see which one belongs to Wobbit Networks. Uh, User can specify the store name. For okay. example, yeah. I Maybe think. network, then we'll show this. And the user can use circuit show to check the details of the certificate. The list and the show for user to debug. Okay. I mean, are you asking to whether user can, how can user find whether a specific certificate is present in any test store? Yeah, because I'm, so for example, I, I know yeah. I've pulled an image from Acme and I am somehow still not working. So I want to know if Acme certificate is present in my trust store or not. They can, they can use like list and then pipe it through a describe certificate or open SSL command and just grab on that. But they'll have to do it one by one. They have to go through all certificates. They, yeah, they, they can just automate that also. Like grab and pipe. It should like basically oh, list yeah, Got it. and pipe that. Okay, grab and pipe. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so that's a question for uh ye. Will grab and pipe commands work across these? If yes, then my query is solved. Okay. Anybody else has any feedback on this so that uh, then ye can close this item and we can and refresh. I, I, I just left my comments in the, the chat. Okay. You may, you may want to address those questions now or later. Um, I'll leave it up to you. I yeah, I can, I can do that later. I see Rose comment. So I will clarify this later. I, I added some comments. We can, uh, comments, we can go over it if you want. Okay. You see. Okay, I see your comment, okay. So that one, uh, the in addition to the CA and TSA, there is a signing authority trust store. I went and checked the trust store trust policy spec that hasn't been updated for that, that's on me. I'll update it, but I'm, I'm pointing out that there is a, there's another trust store type, I'll put the link in there and can go to the next one. Um, ignore this. I resolved it. Your next list and list handles that. Uh, yeah, empty store is not an error condition. We can, as in, 
you can display that it's empty. It's not a, it's a valid condition for installation to not have a trust store. So it depends on how you want to display, display the message. It's, you, it's not like error, this, it's an empty trust store. You would just, instead of the list view, you would just say there, are, there is no certificates in the trust store, something like that. Um, show uh, sorry, meaning you mean, you mean the empty trust store is not an error. So it could be a successful execution, but uh, uh, notify the user there's no certificates under the store, right? Yeah, yes. So currently I put it on, on the field. Yeah, I, I think uh, I can change it. Um, details of certificate. Uh, yeah, I just put a comment. We, we can run this. This can help with diagnostics. So if a root certificate doesn't have the specific set of uh, KUs, EKUs, et cetera, that we have in the certificate requirements, it'd be good to run that validation at this point. And you can display that a warning that that certificate is not in line with those requirements. So verification with that will fail. Do we care uh, at this time, Salvin? Like, if they have provided invalid certificate, is a root certificate? It has, like, should they abide? Like, it will by default fail during verification. I think it's a good opportunity to show. It should uh, be that the add time would be the right thing to do, right? Even add time would be right. Yeah, you're correct. Even during add, you could you could validate, and if the customers really want to bypass that for some reason, they can go ahead and put it in the path. And it, it this this functionality we we can add it post RC one though. We, we, just making a note, we can improve upon this by proactively validating it and failing fast. Yeah, the question I had like, do we really need show certificate here command? Can we just redirect the customers to some other tool? I mean, we can implement, but there are open access or any other tool which will display the certificate like. User already knows the location of the path and they can just use some other tool to get the information yeah, from I, the certificate. Yeah, I, I tend to agree that I was, once we went through all of these, I was going to ask which ones of these do we really want for RC1? Yeah. Uh, when you're the case for the show, the details of the certificate is that, so for the open SSL, maybe this only limited to the Linux environment. We have other platform like Windows. So if we have a command, so users don't need to worry about other commands. Uh, you just need to use the, the notation search to show the details. Otherwise, considering different platform, user may need to use different tool. Yeah, I would, I would push this post RC1. If you if you agree, if it is implemented in the CLI, it would be good to have a consistent experience across the platforms. Uh, another thing related to this is that although currently we don't have a CLI to manage the trust policy, so you the need to manually uh, uh, create a trust policy JSON file. And in the JSON file, there is a trust identities, you the need to retrieve the trust identities from the certificate. So there should be a way to ask a user how to do it. So with this command, you just need to use start the show and get the information trust identity uh, using this command. Otherwise, we, we, we really need a document to, to show the user how to do it using other tools. This would Most. just use the Golang's X509 certificate reader, whatever functionality is available to display this, right? It can be implemented that way. Shiva, Ritesh. We meant it is about whether we want to do it on RC1 or later. Uh, so the question for me is that if we do it later, so consider a trust policy, how the user can easily get that so, 
cluster identity information. So almost all operating system has some inbuilt tool to display certificate information. Like I'm not sure about Windows, but at least in Linux and Mac, we can get anything. Yeah. So uh, do do we? I, I mean, for trust product, do we need to uh, really show the user different tools and, they, they need to you, or and, or just ask the user to to get this information? And the, uh, I'm the, considering the user experience. The trust anchor should be shared by the vendor. User user shouldn't try to derive it from the certificate because usually you will pin on root and the trust anchor, which will would be of leaf. So that should be shared by customer, like vendor in most of the cases. You won't like if, if you're pinning on leave directly and you have a leave certificate, then you don't need anchor also. Like I'm just trying, trying to understand which use case, what's the use case where customer will inspect the certificate and get trust anchor out of it. What Pratesh is saying is right. So if if you if you just have a list of if you have one or more certificates in a named trust store, in the policy, there are two ways to configure this. You say, I trust any certificate chain to this, any of this root certificates. You just give the trust store name. Otherwise, if, if there's a specific leaf certificate you're anchoring on a signing identity or trusted identity, you provide that. And that value is not derived out of this trust store. That value is provided by the vendor who distributes you software. Okay, so the trust identities, we yeah, should get it from the vendor. Certificate. Uh, so Shivay, do you have any comments here? Yeah, I'm just just thinking about scenarios. So, um, so basically, current scenario is that the identities will always be obtained from the vendor. Uh, so, if someone want to be a vendor, then uh, he or she has to uh, in, uh, inspect the certificate using some other tools. And, the, and this scenario is not documented anywhere, right? No, it's not. It's from... Uh, so that scenario is, how did you get your signing certificate? And then... Yeah. So uh, the scenario is how to be a vendor. Yep, I think that that is a good point. We 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 do need some instructions. Around no, it. so when they generate CSR, they would be using some tooling to generate CSR, and that value is part of CSR. If you're requesting a certificate from some CA, you generate a CSR, and that tooling, and when it generates a CSR, you provide what all values. Then we provide some values there, and when you inspect a CSR, you will get that values. Of like subject. Yeah, I think uh, I think she was probably saying irrespective of that, like there's there's some user documentation required. Oh yeah, that... I agree there. Yeah, I have to go, guys. So is there anything else I can help with? I'll go look at that pull request tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Roy. Thanks, guys. Bye. Yes. So I think we can we can take this off. I unless unless there's some other scenario at least, at least for the trust policy scenario it is not required. And then so we, we, we remove this uh, set show. In the in the troubleshooting section, um, thinking when you would. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think our logging, et cetera, like when, when the verification fails, it has some level of detail on what specific aspect it failed. Uh, yeah, we can re revisit this. I think for RC1, that is not required. And then the delete, I had a couple of comments on the delete. The, 
sorry, as you can scroll all the way down. Um, yeah, the delete. Um, so store name, you, you always require a type and the store name. So the first command there doesn't seem to be valid. Like uh, the CA and TSA are two parallel branches, right? Parallel subfolders under which there are named stores. So the second command seems valid. Yeah, so there is CA, there's name named under that, TSA named under that. You may or may not have same names used, but even if same names are used, you don't want to modify or or have to ma manipulate trust stores under two different types. So the command can be the second command, and then I'm not sure of the delete specific certain. Okay, so that the third command is delete a specific certificate. Uh, uh, I think he has missed the uh, the, uh, the original scenarios for those commands. Uh, for example, uh, the first command is delete all certificates of a certain name store. Is that, for example, uh, I have added a lot of certificates for a company, say company A, mm -hmm. and uh, I have added a lot of certificates like CA certificate, TSS certificates, and uh, uh, today uh, uh, I, I'm not trusting the certificate from company A anymore. So I want to delete all certificates from the uh, company A. So uh, I just want to type, okay, uh, delete store company A, and that, that's all. I to delete all the certificates from that company. I think the the scenario is valid. the The issue yeah. I see is the under X X509, right? You have CA, TSA, and there is a signing authority. There can be in future there can be other trust store types depending on any yeah. other signing scheme supported. So they they can or they may or may not be related, and the the command assumes or like assumes that in all cases they are related and you may not want to delete more more than under a specific trust or the side effect of that is user has to run two commands and it, it, the question is if we are if we are okay with that experience like if you if you go by the logic that somebody uh if you just scroll up uh again uh some so if user says delete name Acme Rockets minus minus all, I think it's assuming that there's a Acme Rockets under every trust store type. And then like, if it isn't, is that an error condition or a, I'm not able to answer that, which is, which is why I think it's better to just have those specific deletes. And in the minority of the cases, user will have to run two or two commands. I think I hear you, but uh, that's the right thing to do. But I think Shiva has raised a different point. What Shiva is saying is, don't users want to simplify the deletion not by the certificate name, but by the company name or the common name, uh, saying all certificates from uh, Acme should be deleted. Uh, yeah, you you can. I think the thing is, it won't correlate with the TSA every time. So. Uh, if Acme and Wabbit are public, uh, publicly trusted, they have publicly trusted certificates and they, they, they are distributing publicly trusted artifacts, they would use the same set of TSAs. You don't have to set up a new TSA every time. They would just use publicly trusted TSA. Uh, I guess there's a gap here. So uh, uh, what's the name for TSA in here? So is the name is for the uh, the TSA name or the name is the uh, uh, the common name that? Um, so the um, name is for for the we don't really specify it. The name is for a particular type of grouping. I think what you can yeah. generate yes. say is. Yes. So that means that it's just a group name. So basically, it can be uh, the TSA name. Or, uh, or the common name that use a certain list of TSAs. 
Yeah, but you can combine them also, right? Like for example, that publicly trusted TSAs is all the public CA TSA. Uh, we probably need a documentation to suggest the, the user how to name the uh, the the names. Um, I mean, conventionally. Yeah, the, the TSA part, ideally where we want to be for GA is that the trust store is ships with notation. The, the CAs, it's understandable that I think even for the CAs, you, you probably want a public CA pre pre-configured one, and then users can add additional organizational ones that they want as additional name trust stores. We haven't gotten into that story. Yeah, we probably need to have a uh, suggestion block for users on how to name the, the TSA group name and the CA group names. Yeah, these are like usually these steps are done by kind of system administrators and for them to share the instructions. But you're yeah, right. I mean, I mean, we should have a guideline for this. Yep. I would say let's let's start with the more simplified delete commands and we can add more later. The, especially the delete all, I think there are some sharp edges with that. The the one above the yeah, delete all of a certain name store. Uh, e, do you have any comments? Um, I think maybe for now we we can uh, we don't need to add it uh, because currently the most of the type are the CA type. Uh, so I'm thinking whether we can we can. Uh, I mean, if a user don't specify the type, do we uh, can we assume it is the CA type of trust store? Um, because we don't have TSA supported yet. Uh, there is the signing authority trust store, though that is the second type. Um, also, like how will it work with back account? But back uh, for like back uh, company, when we, once say, we introduce, I would say some of these places you want the user to be explicit. I think it's okay for them to specify a minus type CA. We have taken the same approach in even the trust policy. Like in some places where like trusted identity star, instead of omitting trusted identity, we, we force the user to specify star because both with trust store and trust policy, you want user to know exactly what they're doing. So forcing the user having the type as a required parameter, I, I see that as a good thing. Uh, and it's okay that you can't provide the most simplified experience there. Also, I said delete would be like a rare command. It won't be used often. It's like only, I, I'm assuming the only time that uh, someone would use delete is like either they have genuine use case to distrust some of the CAs or any certificate or they're trying to set up a new trust store. Both should be the, like a rare event. And then you would have correspondence between the add and delete to both for add and delete, you specify the type and then whatever else is required. I had one comment on add certificate. It's like uh, right now we, we allow user to specify multiple certificate during add command. Uh, how will we respond when, like let's say there are four certificates, uh, we added two of them successfully and we failed for two. The question is why, why, you, would, why you would fail. I mean, it can be any reason. Let's say there are four files. I you don't have. I don't have permission to read, uh, read on one file. It can be anything. Or like uh, my o my OS is wonky, and there are no file descriptors available for after some command. 
I think it would just display the error. I think it would display that these are the files as, as you copy over each files, they got copied and the rest got, because there's nothing special that we are doing this. This is just moving files over, right? So I would treat it similar to if somebody was scripting or manually trying to move these into a directory. So basically we should display the success command for each certificate. Yeah. And then it, it would show the failures as they, as they happen. Thanks, Uriya. Hmm. I think for add, the other thing to consider is if we have a bundle of certificates, like if you're, uh, it depends. Many times the bundle is just a bundle PEM, which has multiple certificates, but you could have a directory which has multiple certificates. And um, I mean, you could generate the list of files too, but the, the question whether you want to take a directory, that is another thing to consider for multiple certificates. Hmm. Yeah, directory could be a a good idea as well because if user has many files, user need to specify the file path, right? So if yeah. we just specify the directory, it will be easy for the user. Yeah, but there's like each of these scenarios you add, there are like more decisions to be made. So that that could be an improvement because if it's a directory, then you have to filter it by like what extensions do we, does it only take yeah. dot CRT, SERP, things like that. So I would say just things to consider. We can add the most simplest forms of these commands in RC1 and we can improve upon them. Okay. I didn't have any other feedback. Thanks you for putting this together. Uh no problem. Uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, just now we discussed about uh, this default type, whether we can assume the default type. I, I didn't uh, get it. So or you just should specify the type. I think they should specify the type. Uh, like I said, it's, it's better given that there are multiple types of trust store and there's different meaning associated with each of them. And it is a it is a trust operation, right? Misconfiguring this has implications, mainly in terms of your verification will fail. Uh, it's good for the CA type to be mentioned. Uh, okay. How about the store name? Uh, whether we store? could, if user user didn't specify a store name, how about we? Uh, use default as the store name? I would say, again, I would say because like compared to, I think even in Windows under the trust store, you have different names. When you add, you say whether it goes into, I forget the names, like local certificates or it, short answer is it's, it's important to specify the store name. If you, if you create a default, uh, it's very likely users just end up keeping on adding certificates using the simple command and you have unrelated certificates ending up in a default store. And then you're in your trust policy, you say, I trust the default store and that that has issues. Mm. Okay, thanks. Thanks many for explanation. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I also agree that we can keep the uh, necessary command here, and we can improve it uh, later to add more users there. Yeah. Yeah, you can create the PR out of this. Uh, I mean, up, up to you. You can, you can, you can maintain kind of post RC1. Uh, I will. The ideas. I, I will create a PR for, uh, for this uh, trust or stack. I, I will put it in the in the. Uh, in, in our repository. So this uh, markdown mm -hmm. file is uh, is used for review because it's easy to add the command, uh, yeah. comments. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I will make a summary and create a PR for the trust store. There I expect. Um, All right, guys, I think we ran out of time on this one, uh, but let me quickly recap as to what we had put on the agenda. So we covered the first two items here. Similarly, for all the other user stories, there are items going on. Um, so let's see if we can do it offline. If not, we'll pick it up back uh, again on Thursday to see which one of these items are remaining.
to prioritize, but uh, the agenda yeah. is pretty clear as to what all steps are remaining. So let's look at that. And now, just- uh, uh, I will, sorry, sorry, Sammy. I will check these uh, items and I will post uh, the answers in the Slack for, for the question related to, uh, to me. Yeah. Uh, so that, that uh, you can do it offline. Yeah, that would be great. One other thing that I was thinking is like, we were sharing updates here. I had one idea that we can put the updates instead of in quick here or hack empty here. What if we put the updates here and we, you know, we, we put the last update here in the comments. That way we don't have to do it here. We can just go here to look at the latest story here. It's, it's an idea. If you have some other ideas as to what's the latest on a given user story, I'm open for it. Otherwise, I was thinking, let's just override these and just put a date and say, what was the last update here? Okay, uh, I think we can we, we can do it. Yeah, it's okay. easy to use this uh, planning board, yeah. Yeah, let's if we use the planning board every time, we will avoid these big agendas because that's what we're trying to describe what's the next step, stuff like that. Okay, have a look and then we can talk. The last two things very quick was, besides the user stories, which are covered here, there are some items which are not related to a user story that we need to work on as well. I'm just calling out for attention. We may need to create a catch all user story for all of these items so that we don't lose visibility. Right now, these are not being captured in the notation planning project or in the notary planning project. So Yi, if you have some ideas how to capture these other items, uh, do we need to create a new user story and put all of them together into one miscellaneous user story or however way? I think we should um, uh, we we should create specific ones. These are like unrelated set of items. Yeah, they are. They are. Okay. So 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 these don't have to be user stories. Then they can just be individual items for RC one. Then they don't have to be user stories. Then okay, that's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, th there are a couple here that we still have to discuss. Uh, I added threat model today the third last item, and then the second last external pen test. We talked about this on Thursday. Uh, we, we can, we, those two items we need to, we need to talk about. I, I think uh, for Shiva and then Steve is not here, uh, maybe on Thursday, uh, but we should think about to what extent we want to cover these two activities in RC1. Uh, we cannot totally ignore both of these because it is a notation is a security product. So we need to decide which of the threat model areas we should prioritize and cover. Uh, external pen test, we should have a plan for RC1. And I think there's some of this requires feedback from Niaz and Steve as well. So, but I, I want people to think about this and how to break it down into pre-RC1 and post-RC1 tasks. Uh, just the information, Steve will be off for two weeks. Okay. And he will be back uh, uh, October at the 4th. All right. Okay. So yeah, if you get a chance to create these items, create these items. Otherwise, uh, I'll see what's remaining and we can create them on Thursday. If they're not created by that time, yep. Sounds fair. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Thanks, folks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.